everybody. Jim from Japan here. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, background, we got a nice uh, backdrop of, of Osazaki down on the Izu Peninsula with Mount Fuji. Hope you enjoy. Today's topic, uh, the real danger of poor open water instruction. All right, so open water instruction is maybe one of the most common levels of instruction out there, mainly because a lot of people actually do not go past open water and, and many people quit very shortly after open water instruction. One reason is because a lot of folks, like any new hobby, um, you know, they get kind of enthused about it. And scuba is very situational, like, oh, we're going on a uh, vacation to Aruba. Wouldn't it be great to get certified and dive uh, in Aruba together for our honeymoon or for our anniversary and then never dive again, All right? That, that is actually really, really uh, common, All right? So on, on the danger, so when I, when I first became an instructor uh, way back, um, I initially thought, you know, when I was imagining in my mind, what's, what's the danger? You know, a bad instructor, if I do a bad job, if someone does a bad job, what's the danger? And in my mind back then, safety was my thought. You know, like, wow, there'd be this lack of safety that, you know, people will be getting injured, getting hurt, uh, injuring themselves, injuring other people. Uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, injury, injury, injury. In, in actual fact, so in, in, in my experience, in my opinion, right, the uh, usual, the biggest cause of, of a uh, poor course, poor, that's, you know, defined poor uh, is, is another issue in itself. But, but very often the biggest cause, in my opinion, of a, of a poor course is time, lack of time, right? Um, right, doing, doing tasks only once, very, very little pool, uh, no repetition of tasks, just like check a box, yes, this student did this one time, maybe it wasn't great, maybe it was great, maybe not, but yeah, he did it, he survived, or she survived, he or she survived that task, right, done, on to the next, uh, as opposed to, you know, taking a lot of time, you know, doing things with a lot of repetition so that they're, you have muscle memory, uh, that sort of thing, right? So in my, in my observation, that is the biggest factor, right? Is this lack of time issue. And that's a whole nother topic. So in, in my, my observation, right? What happens is people take these short courses, possibly as, as little as two days, right? Very, very compact. And you know what? A two-day course for someone who's who's a fantastic athlete with a lot of eye-hand coordination, great comfort in the water, very motivated. Yeah, for that person, maybe two days, maybe one day, maybe no instruction. Just reading a book might have been okay for a very small number of people. However, for some people, right, for probably the majority, right, me, or if someone doesn't have great comfort in the water, is not particularly athletic, maybe not a super strong swimmer, maybe they're not that motivated. And that's another issue, right? Sometimes, uh, right, couples are the, the quintessential example of, you know, one person is saying, yeah, honey, I really want to do this. Maybe it's a he, maybe it's a she. Uh, I really want to do this course. We're going to, you know, uh, Maldives. Let's do this, right? Let's, let's dive. And one person is like, yeah. Other person's like, ooh, <laughs> you know? You know, why are you doing it? Because I really want to. Why are you doing it? Because he or she wants to, right? So uh, maybe that person needs a little extra time, right? So the cost, the danger, right? In, in my experience, certainly physical danger uh, could be an issue, injury, that sort of thing. But more often what I see is a lack of comfort, right? Because a lack of familiarity with the, the gear. I really never learned how to use this BC or gosh, you know, what? how do I get water out of this? Or, you know, um, so there's a lack of comfort, a lack of familiarity. Uh, that could also be a lack of safety, but what happens is it's a lack of enjoyment, which means the person is never motivated to do this activity ever again, right? And in my experience, right, we, we talk about learning curves in many sports, many activities, and in, in my experience, you've got this, this curve, right, this peak uh, up here under, under Mount Fuji, and if once you get to that peak, right, you can continue on or you can take a break, right? Maybe one year you don't dive at all and you get back to it and oh, you're, you're still up there. 
right? Once you, you do enough dives to get over this curve, however, many folks, right? They, they did their, their, uh, their course, they, they, it was a short course, they really didn't enjoy it, so they really don't like diving yet, right? So they don't dive a lot, and they're always kind of sliding up and down this learning curve, right? They're sliding up and down. Their instruction wasn't great, they didn't get comfort so that they were near this, this hump, and so they're, they're kind of trying to get up this hump, and then they take time off, slide all the way down, and then go back and they start and they, they're always a danger to themselves and they're not enjoying things and so they quit, right? So apparently, I don't, I don't have the, the statistics here. I'll, I'll, I'll have, I should have done that. Um, you know, the percentage of people who uh, get certified and never dive again. So my, my advice for, for if there's anybody out there who's thinking of getting certified or has a friend who's thinking about getting certified, um, just remember, I, I know when I got certified, I was all about speed as well, right? I mean, I, I wanted to have it done. I wanted to be out there enjoying myself. But now, you know, being older and a little bit wiser and having seen a lot of things, you know, my strong advice to anyone getting certified is take a comprehensive course with a, with a shop or an instructor that has a, a good reputation for success with a lot of satisfied, uh, skillful divers who have passed through their courses right? Uh, don't, you know, life is long, <laughs> right? Uh, and invest that extra day or extra two days if it is uh, for, for a, a hobby that you're going to have for lifelong. Take your time, choose a good instructor, um, you know, or a good shop and uh, enjoy yourself for, for the rest of your long diving years will be my, my advice, all right? All right, thanks for joining in. Uh, see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks for watching. All right, well, if you like this kind of thing and uh, you think you'd like to see more, uh, I think there's a subscribe button right around here somewhere. And if you are coming to Japan and you'd like to hook up with us and dive, I think right around here there's a spot where you can click, come and have a look at the webpage and see what kind of events are going on. All right, thanks a lot. See you on the beach. Bye.